Hey guys, this is Olivia from OrganicOlivia.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about something that is probably the most requested Q&A subject of all time on my website, my Instagram, and my YouTube, and that is acne. How I get rid of my acne, what you guys can do for your breakouts, and the different root causes behind acne. Now, I say root causes because no two people's acne is going to be the same. Sometimes someone's acne is caused by digestive issues or food sensitivities or constipation even. And another person's acne might be caused by hormone imbalance or both because maybe your hormone imbalance is slowing down the movement of your food through your intestines. Lucky for you guys, my acne had a couple different causes. I had the digestive and I also had the hormonal. So hopefully the natural therapies and diet changes that I talk about here resonate with you guys and can help you find relief as well. Now my skin is not 100% perfect by any means. I still get some spots when I'm stressed or sometimes around my menstrual cycle, but my face used to be covered in cystic acne. Not only was it painful, but it was embarrassing as well because our society is very external, beauty driven, and people will look at you or you'll feel like people are looking at you. And you know, little kids love to point out, like, what's that on your face? Look at these bumps. Look at that I got what? The eczema. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really understand what you're going through if you are an acne sufferer watching this right now. And just know that I empathize with you and I have a lot of love for you and this is not permanent. The fact that your face is breaking out is just a symptom or a clue of something going on deeper within your body and it is absolutely repairable once you figure out what it is. Your body wants to heal and it will heal. This is not permanent. So let's get started. So number one, I have a little paper right here if you guys see me looking down. Number one was improving my digestion and getting my bowels moving so that I could clean out all the waste that I had no idea was in my intestines. Now Ayurvedic medicine says that if you wake up in the morning and you have a white or a thick coating on your tongue, that is a re poisonous residue of undigested food. So your digestive fire is not strong enough, your food is going undigested and fermenting in your gut and turning into waste or food for pathogens and opportunistic bad bacteria. Um, this is called AMA, and Ayurveda considers that to be the beginning stage of any illness. So if you've heard it's all in the gut or it all starts in the gut before, that really rang true for me. I had to really fix my digestion and work on constipation and the motility of food through my gut so that it wasn't just sitting there and then fermenting and coming out through my skin. Remember that your skin is an elimination organ, so if your pathways and elimination channels like you know your intestines and your colon are blocked, it's going to totally show, especially in your forehead. If you look at a chart of traditional Chinese medicine's face mapping, you'll see that the entire forehead area is toxic intestines or a toxic digestive tract. A lot of my acne was on my forehead, and that is how I knew that at least that aspect of it was based in my digestion. So many of the common foods in the standard American diet, like charred meats, processed food, soda, they all inflame and weaken your intestines, and other foods like processed breads and pasteurized dairy can act like a glue and actually adhere to your intestinal walls, causing sort of a mucoid plaque and just build up that your body is not able to eliminate. So over time, this waste that's building up kind of becomes food for pathogenic or bad bacteria in your gut. And that bad bacteria can eat it and ferment it and create a lot of these toxic byproducts like ammonia, mercaptan, indoles, and hydrogen sulfide. Those are all pretty toxic um, gases and byproducts that are released by pathogenic bacteria and parasites in your gut. And those substances can actually move through the gut wall, kind of like leaky gut, and go right into the bloodstream. And that can cause acne, body odor, brain fog, fatigue, a ton of things and that also clogs up the lymphatic system because all the waste in the blood is filtered through your lymphatic system. Now if you don't know what the lymphatic system is, it's basically a system of vessels that is twice as long as your circulatory system. But unlike the blood vessels, it doesn't have a heart to pump it. So the only thing that pumps your lymph really is very deep breathing from your diaphragm, exercise, you know, the contraction of your skeletal muscles that surround the lymphatic vessels. So you kind of have to manually pump that thing. And most people are sitting all day, I'm sitting right now, and not pumping their lymph enough. So <laughs> when the lymph can't exit through 
the GI tract and the colon, it'll go to the kidneys and try to get out because that's another elimination organ. And when that doesn't work, it tries to come out through the skin. And when that happens, you get acne, you get boils and cysts and pimples and psoriasis and eczema and all these different skin disorders. The majority of your lymphatic system also surrounds the gut. It's called gut-associated lymph tissue or GALT. And as soon as you get constipated or your intestines are backed up or filled with gunk that's fermenting by these bugs, your lymph is also going to be backed up directly that surrounds your gut. And that's when abdominal distension and abdominal fat and swelling can build up. So number one is increasing your bowel movements. If you are a person who you already know that you're constipated, you're not using the bathroom two to three times a day, and you're not eating enough fiber or not moving enough, this is your number one step to get started on your way to clear skin is moving your bowels and moving your lymph. So make sure that you are exercising every day, whatever that is to you, if it's dancing, yoga, running, HIIT workouts, like insanity or something like that, just make sure that you are getting your body moving. And also think about the 23 hours that you aren't having your hour workout and don't be sitting throughout all of those hours. Try to get some walks in. You know, if you have to be on a phone call for work, try to walk while you're doing that, even pacing around your office. Try to stretch in between the time that you have at your desk to keep your lymph moving. And of course, eat more fiber so that you can have more bowel movements. You know, try to get a ton of servings of cooked vegetables into your diet, and especially in the form of soups, because the warm liquid from the soups can also get things flowing and moving. And lastly, if you, those steps don't work and you are someone who's really constipated and it's putting a hamper on your life, Lower Bowel Formula is an herbal formula that I have used for years with incredible success. It's like 12 or 13 bucks on Amazon and it is not a laxative. It strengthens the lower intestines so that your muscle contractions can be a little bit stronger and your bowels can be more consistent. I use it every time I'm traveling because I'm eating a totally different inconsistent diet and I use it anytime I become constipated in my regular life because of stress or whatever it is. So if I'm lightly constipated or I'm just taking it for travel prevention reasons, I take two capsules two to three times a day. But if I'm really constipated or going through something, I'll take three capsules three times a day. So this is a wonderful way to start cleaning out your bowels, cleaning out all that waste, and getting out a lot of the, the gunk that feeds the pathogenic bacteria. And that leads me to number two, taking out the bad bacteria from your gut and repopulating your microbiome with beneficial organisms or probiotics that perform different anti-inflammatory and digestive functions for you. So they can strengthen your entire body, not just your digestion and your bowel movements. Well, I'm not sure if you guys have been prescribed antibiotics for your acne in the past, but I have, and I took doxycycline for a while, and every time I would take it, my acne would get so much better, but whenever I would get off of it, it would get worse again. And as you guys may know, if you're on this channel about organic living, <laughs> antibiotics destroy all the probiotics in your gut, and they can really wreak havoc. So, um, I, that's the antibiotic aspect is how I kind of had this intuitive feeling like, hey, you know, trying natural antimicrobials and antiparasitics might actually help, and maybe they won't kill all the good guys because they're plant-based, and by supplementing probiotics, I'll be able to even put the good guys back. That was always in the back of my head. Like, I know there is a bacterial element because the antibiotic works so well, but of course, it leaves your gut in worse shape than when you started, so it's kind of like just a band-aid. But I recently watched a video by YouTuber Lauren Elizabeth, you guys may know her, and she opened up about her journey with chronic illness. And I thought it was absolutely amazing because she was spot on. She talked about how all throughout her life she had all these different symptoms. Muscle aches, extreme fatigue, always getting sick, skin problems. She went to all these different doctors, they did tests, and they told her, you have no allergies, there's nothing wrong with you. And just like me, she was kind of just sent home with some diagnoses that really didn't tell her what was at the root cause of her illness. She was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, or I think fibromyalgia and Lyme disease, but she was never told, this is what's going on and this is what you can do to help it. So she moved to LA where a lot of the doctors and practitioners are, you know, holistic and crunchy and all that good stuff. And she saw a holistic doctor and this guy tested her microbiome. And whereas you're supposed to have this much good bacteria, probiotics, and this much pathogenic bacteria that the good guys keep in check, she had this much bad bacteria and this much good bacteria. So 
all of the bad guys are fermenting your food and um, stopping you from digesting nutrients properly and just messing with your entire system releasing toxic byproducts and remember that with bad bacteria come parasites and other organisms of that nature because organisms like to live in colonies so that there's diversity and they can have a better chance of thriving and that was completely my experience. Lauren is now on natural antibacterials that are herbal. I found out like two months ago that I'm allergic to all those things that I have all this bacterial problem in my stomach. I've been taking things to kill all the bacteria in my stomach. The bacteria in my stomach is so bad I could have taken antibiotics for it but we just believed that that would only make things worse and isn't the right solution to do like herbal supplements and nutrient dense things instead. And it's just crazy because like your immune system is rooted from your stomach, your digestive system. And so when I have been growing up this whole time eating all these things that I'm allergic to and sensitive to and not taking care of my gut, that has been so sick this whole time that it's not able to fight off the rest of the sicknesses. So I've cut all that stuff out of my diet. It's been super hard, like I said. And I've been trying to kill the bacteria in my stomach. And then I had to go on probiotics to fix the bacteria. And that is exactly what I did for my digestive system when I had IBS and acne. I started parasite cleansing. If you guys want to hear my story, I talk about it on my blog a lot because I now make my own parasite cleanse. I am all about this. So I started parasite cleansing and I realized Number one, I have a lot of waste built up inside of me, and number two, I have you know these organisms and these creatures that doctors always told me I never had, even when I did stool tests and colonoscopies. So, of course, repopulating with probiotics every night after I took the doses, I was able to eliminate a lot of the bad guys and repopulate with a lot of the good guys that give you the skin benefits, the anti-inflammatory benefits, and the digestive power. So that was my experience. Um, if you guys wanna check out Parasite Cleansing or my cleanse, it's on organiclivy.com slash store, and I have a lot of blogs about my story. On my birthday, I actually had someone Snapchat me and say that they've been suffering with acne since they were 14. They're now 24, and after doing my cleanse, it's 95% gone, so. That made me want to cry and made me so happy because, again, I know how it feels to have acne and not have an answer. And I'm just really proud that something that I created and something that I believe in is able to help others. So that is another one of my tips that I did. I repopulated my gut with good guys. I take a probiotic every night. The one that I take is called VSL number three. I'll link that on Amazon also below. So the third thing that has really helped with my acne is L-lysine. And L-lysine is an amino acid, which sounds really obscure and crazy when it comes to acne, because you don't think of amino acid deficiency as having a part to play, but apparently this is like a magic bullet. I don't want to call anything like a cure-all or like, you know, a snake oil type, like this fixes everything, but for some reason, lysine is like acne's worst nightmare. I first heard about it when I was browsing acne.org forums. If you even Google it, like lysine, acne.org, you'll find them. And people were saying like, hey, you know, my, my friend's mom saw my acne and told me I should try lysine. And I did, and you know, it was only 10 bucks, so I just gave it a shot. And two to three days later, I have no new spots and it's just getting better and better. So I thought to myself, all right, like I, I really couldn't find any articles explaining L-lysine's connection to acne and why it worked, and I'm a person who really likes to know the inner workings of things before I try something, but I just figured why not. So I started doing that, and it really does make your skin glow and keeps your spots so minimal and, and just not inflamed and they don't get to that cystic level. It's just absolutely amazing. It's one of the best anti-acne supplements I've ever tried. And I hardly hear people mention it. I've watched so many How I Cured My Acne YouTube videos, and there's like one girl that has like 150 views that talks about it. So this is like an unknown thing. And because there's so little information, I have no idea why it works. And usually I have an answer for why things work, and that's my thing to get to the root of illness and natural remedies. But I don't know. So I have some hypotheses about why it works, and somehow it ended up working for my hormonal acne, which is along your jawline and your cheeks. And you know, when I got the digestive acne cleared out, my whole forehead area, my eyebrows, everything like that was good, but I still had all these bumps, especially around my menstrual cycle, on my chin and my jaw. And I started to look up why this could be, and this is what I found. There are a couple basic functions of lysine in the body. 
It helps with calcium absorption. It produces collagen and elastin, which really helps with your skin's uh, you know, suppleness and healing. It produces antibodies for the immune system. It helps with the production of hormones in the endocrine system, another thing related to hormonal acne. It helps with the productions of enzymes in the digestive system, so it even helps digestion and absorption of nutrients. It helps the function of the gallbladder. It activates the pineal and mammary glands. Third eye wide open. Number one, I think that it's kind of the same concept as the whole gut microbiome concept that I just went over in depth. It boosts your immune system to the point that lysine is a remedy for herpes, literally. It keeps cold sores at bay. That is what people take it for traditionally. People will take, you know, two to 3,000 milligrams a day and they won't have herpes outbreaks. So it's incredible for keeping your viral load down. And what I'm thinking is, you know, if it does that good of a job at boosting the immune system, I'm sure that it also helps with the bacteria that has to do with acne and you know, the parasites even. It, it helps to fight all of these critters and microorganisms that are messing with your microbiome. And at the same time, because it's keeping your viral load down, and you know, everybody has viruses, it's not like you just have one virus like herpes and you're stuck with it for life. Everybody has a myriad of different viruses. I'm sure a lot of you guys have had mono or Epstein-Barr, and that stays in your system. It, it lies dormant unless there's an activator, like a huge stressful event or something like that. But it is in your body to some extent. So perhaps because lysine does such a great job at keeping the viral load down, it frees up a lot of your body's energy that would normally go to fighting the virus, and it allows that energy to be used towards the skin and healing. So that's one of my theories. Number two is the hormonal acne theory. Now, this is not set in stone, but there is a lot of evidence, and there have been a lot of studies that suggest that acne can be caused by excess androgens in women and in men. So androgens would be male hormones like testosterone and DHT, and especially the acne that's associated with PCOS, which is a hormonal disorder that causes women to have higher male hormone levels. So DHT, like I just mentioned, is dihydrotestosterone. It is pretty much what people think is the bad guy when it comes to acne. It is like a super growth hormone for your system. So surges of it are important for growth, especially when you're a kid, but it can be problematic as you get older because by definition, if you look up the cause of acne on like medscape.com, the definition of acne or comedone itself is considered to be a result of follicular epidermal hyperproliferation with subsequent plugging of the follicle or pore. So <laughs> there's basically hyperproliferation, which is when cells are proliferating and duplicating too fast and too much. And that's said to be caused by DHT, which as I said, is a growth hormone. You have all this DHT and growth factor running through your system and your cells and your follicles hyperproliferate and then clog. So elevated testosterone and DHT levels in males and females is also associated with increased oil production in the skin, which would make it very easy for those follicles and those pores to get plugged once the hyperproliferation begins occurring. Another substance that pushes growth hormone and, and hyperproliferation similar to testosterone and DHT is insulin and insulin-like growth factor, also known as IGF-1. IGF-1 is beneficial for babies and children. It's found in breast milk because it helps them grow. But recent studies show that it might have the opposite effect in adults, feeding both normal cells and cancerous cells and causing them both to grow and proliferate. Dairy is one of the biggest promoters of IGF-1. And if you notice, the number one thing that helps people's acne, you know, from testimonials all around the internet and from studies is cutting out dairy. A huge part of that is because it is a promoter of IGF-1, and that's why it can also feed cancer. So ditch the pasteurized GMO dairy. So if this theory is correct about the growth hormone and the proliferation, the excess androgens causing acne, the goal here would be to address and reduce the excess androgens and the excess insulin or IGF-1. Guess what? Lysine inhibits the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT and helps to balance your hormones. Sounds plausible, right? Interestingly enough, excess DHT also seems to be the culprit in baldness and hair thinning or hair loss. Researchers have found that both plucked follicles and just skin, epidermis, from a balding scalp contain higher levels of DHT than those from a non-balding scalp. 
And guess what else was found? <laughs> in one study, 90% of women with thinning hair were deficient in iron and the amino acid lysine. Proscar is a drug that's made for prostate disorders and prostate cancers, and it slows down cell growth. It works by inhibiting DHT. The drug company noticed that when men took it for prostate health, they would actually grow hair back on their head. It would fix their baldness. And many doctors also prescribe it for acne, or androgenic acne, because it blocks that DHT just like lysine. Another androgen and DHT blocking drug that's used for acne and hair loss is spironolactone, and that is an anti-androgen. It does the same thing that lysine does. So lysine basically does what these anti-androgenic, anti-acne, and anti-hair loss drugs do, which is block that excess testosterone from turning into the super growth hormone DHT that messes with your cells and your hormones. On top of this, lysine helps with stress, which is a major cause of acne, as I'm sure you guys know. You definitely get a spot when you are stressing or staying up late studying for an exam. Uh, it's been found that lysine deficiency leads to a pathological increase in serotonin in the amygdala, which is a brain structure associated with emotional response and stress. And too much serotonin in the amygdala actually causes anxiety and social phobia and things of that nature. Other substances besides lysine that inhibit that evil DHT are zinc and the omega fatty acid GLA. Now, GLA is found in evening primrose oil and borage oil. And I don't know if you guys have ever read about this, but both evening primrose and borage oils are highly recommended for hormone imbalance, PCOS, um, menstrual cramps, and PMS in women. That is literally because it helps the testosterone issue. It helps to uh, inhibit DHT. And I used to use borage oil for my acne before I found lysine. That's one of the things I used to recommend on my blog way back in the day. But I had to take like six to nine of these gel, huge gel tablets every single day in order to really see a difference in my acne and the hormonal acne. So it really wasn't worth it to me. I kept thinking like there has to be something better than this that, that is a little bit more potent and lysine has totally been that for me. So that has replaced my DHT blocker GLA. I also mentioned that zinc is a DHT blocker and it's been found that lysine actually helps with both zinc and iron absorption in the first place. So remember how I said that 90% of women with hair loss were found to have a lysine and iron deficiency together? They looked at women that were exhibiting chronic hair loss who were being treated for reduced iron stores thinking that that was the issue at play and they failed to achieve adequate increases in serum ferritin despite taking a supplement containing 550 to 100 milligrams of iron per day. But when an l lysine supplement was added of about 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per day, they had a huge increase in serum ferritin. That was like the thing that allowed it to be absorbed into the system. That was what they were missing, this amino acid. They looked at another group of women who were low in serum zinc and they treated them with a daily supplement of L-lysine. Again, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams for 16 weeks. And after the 16 weeks, their serum zinc levels had increased significantly. So lysine just kind of helps your body, I guess, to hold on to these anti-acne minerals better that also tend to balance your hormones. And I, that, that's just my theory on why it works. Again, this is not proven. This is just what I think and why I think it's worked so well for me. So what I do is I take two tablets per day, sometimes three if I feel like my skin's, you know, kind of acting a little funky. And they are 1,000 milligram tablets. I got this one at Whole Foods, but usually I just get the Now brand. This is literally the exact same thing. Whole Foods just sells it for like three bucks more. You know how they do. But, um, it's, it's like my favorite thing for acne. This is it. This is my answer. And like I said, also making diet changes like cutting out dairy because it's the source of IGF-1, which is one of the growth factors that we don't want, which is why we're taking lysine. And cutting out food that spikes your sugar and causes a huge insulin release. Third is skincare. Now, number one, exfoliation is a strategy that you can use for any hyperproliferative condition. So as I mentioned, since acne is by definition hyperproliferative, um, exfoliating can be huge. That's one of the major things that I do every day. I use an apple cider vinegar toner on my skin. So I wash my face once at night, which I'm going to get to in a second, but I wash it once at night, and then I just take a cotton pad and just lightly 
you know, go over my face with apple cider vinegar. It has a high concentration of alpha hydroxy acid, which is a chemical exfoliator and helps to balance the pH on your skin. So that brings me to my second point. Don't wash your face a lot. I literally wash my face once a day. I don't wash it twice. No, it's not gross. You're washing it once at night after all the gunk from the day has hit you so that when your face hits the pillow, it's perfectly squeaky clean. Um, I don't wash it in the morning because, like I said, you have a delicate pH balance on your skin and you don't want to disrupt that by using all these abrasive cleaners and cleansers on your skin and stripping your natural microbiome on your face, just like antibiotics. Leave it alone. Just wash it once at night, a really gentle cleanser, use a little apple cider vinegar, and brings me to my third point, I moisturize with oil. Yes, it doesn't clog your pores. It is the best thing ever. I always thought that using oil on my face was going to just clog up all my open pores, but it actually does the opposite. When you are putting some oil-free, you know, like oil control drying moisturizer on your face to try to dry up the excess sebum, you're telling your skin, oh my god, it's getting really dry. Pump more oil out to balance this. But in fact, if you just put some oil on your skin that kind of matches what your skin naturally produces, that's non-comedogenic, that doesn't clog your pores, your skin says, oh, we already have enough oil on the skin, it's nice and moisturized, everything is fine, I don't need to secrete excess sebum and clog the pores. So using oil really keeps my oil in control. So I use my friend's oil, it's called facial sunshine oil. She is a naturopath in training and she made this at her naturopathic school in Denmark. I love this oil. I'll put a link to this below as well. And the cleanser that I use is Eminence Organic Skin Care. I kind of switch off with cleansers. I like the Tata Harper cleanser too. I have that on my website under products I love. Um, but this one I've been using lately just because honestly, because I'm lazy because this one takes off your makeup too. That is literally the only reason that I use it. It's not like it works way better than Tata Harper. Actually, Tata Harper's one works a little bit better at really cleaning your pores, but I'm just lazy. I don't wanna be using an extra step to wipe off my makeup and get off my mascara, so if I use this and I gently just, you know, move it over my eyelashes, it completely takes off all my eye makeup, my face makeup, my mascara, everything, and it's really gentle. It's organic. Everything is natural. There's willow bark extract, which is the plant-based form of salicylic acid, so it does have some anti-acne ingredients in here. I'll put a link to that on Amazon below as well. I'm getting really tired. Sorry, you guys. All right. That brings me to number four, sleep. <laughs> Perfect. Getting less than eight hours of sleep, if you guys didn't know, spikes your insulin and totally ruins your insulin sensitivity for the day. So your blood sugar is totally off kilter and you have to get at least eight hours. That's when your cells repair. That's when all the cell turnover happens. That's when your acne can actually heal. And that's when your immune system can fight whatever bacteria or inflammation is you know, contributing to those spots. And especially getting to bed before 9 to 10 p.m., that is very difficult, but also very therapeutic. If you can actually commit to doing that, I guarantee you will see a huge difference in your skin. If you look at the Chinese body clock, you will see that between 10 to 1 a.m. is gallbladder time, and between 1 to 3 a.m. is liver time. So that means that those two organs are repairing and cleaning and doing maintenance work during those hours. So you really don't want to be awake and doing all these other actions that require so much energy when your liver is supposed to be cleaning itself and detoxifying your body because your liver is also connected to your lymph and your liver is filtering all that waste in your blood that can dump into the lymph and then go out into your skin. And finally, number five is what I just talked about, the liver. Um, just really supporting your liver so that it can make the right hormones for you, metabolize your hormones completely, and like I said, clean out the waste and purify your blood. Since we talked all that mess about hormone imbalance, you should know that the liver is literally the master hormone metabolizer. So making sure that you're making the right hormones and that they are being excreted properly and aren't floating back around in your system as excess, that's your liver's job. You wanna make sure that it's functioning at 100%. So you wanna be adding maybe some herbal teas into your regimen. If you really like having lemonade, brew some dandelion tea, add some lemon and honey or lemon and stevia to it and make like a dandelion lemonade. 
or just you know have that as your nightly cup of tea before you go to bed a dandelion or a burdock root tea both of those are very very therapeutic for the liver and help to clean out the liver and the lymph so that can help your skin a lot that is my story literally constipation bad bacteria and parasites and putting the probiotics back using this freaking weird magic bullet that is amazing lysine and not washing my face a lot using oil and a gentle cleanser. That is how I got rid of my acne. And you know, being really careful with my diet, not having dairy, not having a ton of bread unless I'm on vacation and moving a lot and my body is doing well. Um, you know, keeping it a lot of plants, a lot of fiber, all whole foods, um, everything pretty much organic that I eat or non-GMO. And just living a clean and healthy lifestyle, keeping my emotions in check, not getting too angry, which is gonna totally aggravate my liver and you're gonna see it through my skin. Um, trying to take time every day to meditate and to write and to take care of me and what's going on inside of my body. So there's a huge emotional aspect to acne, which maybe I'll talk about in another video, but I already said enough. Hope this helps you guys. I hope this resonated with you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'd love to do some follow-up videos, maybe more about how dairy causes acne and that insulin growth factor stuff. So let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you.